Hi everyone, Bill Edstrom here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I haven't put anything on YouTube for oh like two years and that's because I've been doing a lot of video tutorials for Grove 3 and many of you have found those tutorials very helpful. But I've also written two books for Hal Leonard Books. This one called Studio One for Engineers and Producers and another one that came out recently called The Power in Cakewalk Sonar. These kind of build on some of the topics that I've covered in other tutorials. But I wanted to use this particular video to introduce this book. It's actually been out since the early part of the year. It's written around Studio One version 2. And I want to show you a little bit about what's in it. And then at the end, I'm going to excerpt one of the included videos. You'll see that there's a DVD on the back here. And it includes some tutorial videos that are covered right here if you want to see what they look like. So I'm going to pick one of these. I'm going to edit it into the back of this so you've got some real quality content for your viewing pleasure. And I just want to show you about this book. You can get this book at Amazon. You can get it at Barnes & Noble. And you can get it at a lot of major music stores. Also carry it sometimes in stock. Otherwise, you can ask for it and order it. But you can get it easily enough on Amazon. Now, the book is only 171 pages long, but it's also fairly comprehensive coverage. So that means it's definitely a quick pro guide. You can see it recovers things like recording audio. It covers recording MIDI and using virtual instruments. This is the basic introduction to Studio One. If you know some of those things, then you'll find the beginning part might be, you know, it might be review if you already know the program. But if you're getting started with Studio One, then you're going to find it's a good reference if you're cross, crossing over from other software. I commonly reference the other programs and tell you kind of what the terminology differences are. And as you get through it, you'll find that when you get into the editing section, that I go into the details about how to quickly edit audio. And I really love editing audio, so this is uh, an area where basically you can learn the simple tools like building fades and things like that, using doing splits, all different ways to do splits, cross fades, and common editing functions. So that's that part of the book. As you get into it, you'll also see that I do cover, like here, this is covering multi-track drum editing and quantizing. The quantizing and audio bin features are really strong in Studio One, and you'll see that there's a whole chapter devoted to that. Also, there's the Melodyne integration, which was really revolutionary when this came out with Studio One. And I go into the basics of how to use the Melodyne integration. And then it goes all the way through covering a lot of the included effects, as well as if we go on here, it covers releasing projects in the project page. So that's the book. And hang on for an excerpt from the book videos. Hi, Bill Edstrom here. In this video, I want to go over the main tool in Melodyne. Melodyne is integrated in Studio One in a really cool way. So I want to give you just an idea of how that works and how to use the main tool to do some basic pitch and timing corrections. So to invoke Melodyne on a track, all we do is click an event, because it's really an event effect, and then use Command-M if you're on a Mac or Control-M on a PC. Alternatively, you can right-click and you'll find under the audio menu, you'll find Edit with Melodyne right here along with the shortcuts. Let's just go ahead and do that. Now, if you put Melodyne on an event and you don't like it, then you can remove it two ways. One, you can right-click here, go back to Audio, and remove Melodyne. You can see the keyboard shortcut here. Or you can go into the Inspector, and in the Inspector, it's an event effect. So if we open the event effects, you'll see Melodyne here. We can just click this right here and remove Melodyne, and that will take it out. So that's how you apply Melodyne and also how you remove it. Let's go back to Command-M because we want to edit with Melodyne. So let's just hear what we have. Stronger than I was, more than what I was, tougher than I was. Nothing's gonna take that away. So we've got a, just a simple female vocal line here, and we're gonna do a little bit of editing with Melodyne. Now, the main thing you might think you wanna do is pitch correction, but I really like to use Melodyne as a creative tool to try different melody lines or maybe even different timing 
when you're working on a part like this. Now, just a couple of things. I'm in the full Melodyne editor. If you have a Melodyne Essential, it works much like this, except you're missing all these tools. Actually, the tools you have are the ones under this arrow you'll see right here. There's a hand tool that's really a scrolling tool, and then a zoom tool. So the zoom tool allows you, if you move left and right, you can zoom like this, and if you move up and down, you can zoom like this. Just another little hint is that if you double click on the middle of the thumb, then that will recenter Melodyne to basically include all the available notes. And in Melodyne, these notes are called blobs. So we're going to zoom in on one and just take a look at how this works. So we've still got the zoom tool selected. So let's just pick one of these notes and zoom in carefully. And then if I grab the this hand tool, this one, then I can center it like this. Of course, you could do something similar with these tools and these handles as well. Now, the way the arrow tool works in Melodyne is not quite the same as it works in Studio One. And it's also called the main tool. And you'll see it is sensitive to where you point. So if I point in the middle, then I get a pointer. If I point here, you can see this is a tool for stretching. This is also a tool for stretching if it gets near the end of an event like that. And at the top, it turns into a split tool. Also, you'll see that the dividing lines where it changes are visible here because I'm hovering over this blob and I have a certain preference set under view. That's this one that says show blob info. If I turn that off, then you don't get those guides. It's kind of helpful when you're learning Melodyne. After you get used to it, you can probably turn that back off. All right, so the center part is really for moving this blob up or down, left or right. You can only do one or the other before you have to release the mouse button. But anyway, I'm going to push this note up. Right now, it's set to where it will snap to the grid. And so that I'm moving it up or down. Now that will keep it snapped to the grid. If you've got the grid snapping turned on, you can do that right here under the pitch grid. It's got chromatic snap. You can either turn that off or you can hold down the option button if you're on a Mac or the alt button on a PC. Then you can move up and down freely to make pitch corrections. Like this note right here, it's a little ambiguous what note it's actually centered around. So here, you might want to hold down Alt or Option on a Mac. And that would tune the center to more, I guess, more line up with F. Now, if you actually have the full version, you can do something a little bit different. You can double click if you use the pitch tool. This doesn't exist in the Melodyne Essential version, but you just double click and you can see that that moves it or centers it around the pitch. You could actually do a whole section of a song that way by selecting a bunch of notes and then just double clicking and it will tune them all right up. All right, back to the main tool. Now on the front part here, I can just stretch like this. And if it's like, connected to another note, it will actually stretch it to keep you know, to kind of keep that note transition lined up. So you can really play around with the timing this way. Also, clicking up here in the top part of the timeline will drop the cursor. You could see that Studio One and Melodyne will stay in sync related to that. If you double click here, it will start playbacks. More than what I want. It's a little weird what I just did there. So I'll just undo all that. Just really want to show you how these tools work. Now, the other thing is here, if I stretch this, it will move the back part, keeping the front part of the note in sync. More than what I was. See, so yeah, I was able to really stretch out the timing of that particular note. We could move it back. Now on the top part, we can separate a note. If I just double click, then you can see that it actually separated the note. You can see that pitch changed a little bit because it recalculates the pitch based on this part of the note. Then we're free to go back to the center of this I... note and completely rearrange it like that. More than what I was. Pretty interesting. And if we have a note where it wasn't separated in the original calculation, but maybe it it's a different word or something like that, then we can use that note separation on the top. Let's just listen a little bit. Tougher than I was. Right, here is the word than. So just uh, zoom in a little bit here. And if I put a note separation here, then I could separate the word than from the other word. 
So I'll just move it up. Move it up to match this note. Tougher than I was. Let's just move this note. Tougher than I was. Kind of interesting, but you can really play around with these. Let me just listen to the end. Tougher than I was. Nothing's gonna take that away. Maybe we'll. Nothing's gonna take that away. Nothing's gonna take that away. Nothing's gonna take that away. So that's an introduction to how to apply Melodyne to a track and then use the main tool to edit pitch and timing. Thanks for watching.